It's the time for a package from China. It's the Retroid Pocket made in China. It's freaking about time this thing came in. Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Retroid Pocket number two. Yes, I already did a review about it at the previous models. Uh, yeah, model models. And yeah, this is just a new edition or it's already here, an older edition because they already released some new colors. But OK, nevertheless, the internals are exactly the same. So this is version number two and whatever. OK, so what we're going to get is this extra adapter. Free goodies. I like it. Then we're having the HDMI cable because we can connect this thing to a television. It's one of the awesome features of the Retroid Pocket 2. But let's take a close look at the product itself because I'm very curious what are we going to get with the new model. I ordered the GameCube edition as you can see over here at the back. We're having a lot of different versions and nowadays we're having the transparent Nintendo 64. Let's say more like a rip-off controller colors. Okay guys, so with this version I have the GameCube edition as you can see over here. And I really like the colors of this and I'm a big GameCube fan so I'm thinking hey I need to get myself a GameCube color. So what I already mentioned that we're having now the new transparent editions. And for the people who are not familiar to the product itself, it's this a very interesting device that can do a lot of awesome things. But let's take a close look at first the toilet paper mounts. Ooh, the waving warranty card. Okay, that's something you don't see very often with these systems. Hmm. Deluxe toilet paper manual, you can say. Okay, let's take a close look inside. Hmm, for some decent explanation. Here we're having the specifications and how that everything works. So I must say they did a very nice job with this. Okay, uh, okay so it included an, mm, I think it's a USB cable. Uh, yeah, it's in Type-C. So everything is included in the package. And for the people who like the protection, yeah, what we're going to get with this, is I'm not getting this thing open fast enough, extra protection, if you want to. I don't like these things, to be honest. I'm just going to be very careful. And don't touch it too much with your finger. And don't lick it, very important. But I just want to point out that they did a very nice job with everything that you're going to get inside the basic kit with the manual and of course also the very nice screen protector and the cable. Everything is nicely packed up and I think this is something you don't see very often with the handhelds. Retroid Pocket 2, I do like it for what they're doing over there. Alright, so let's talk about specifications. The Chinese call this the product parameter or in other words, Wicked loves to say this is the ETA Prime moment. This thing has a CPU in Gore-Tex A7 quad-core that runs on 1.5 GHz. RAM is 1 GB LPDDR3. Storage is 8 GB eMMC, but we can extend it with an SD card, of course. Graphics is an ARAM Mali 400 MP2 500 MHz. Systems with Android 6.0 and also the 8.0. Depends a little bit what version you're buying. So far, I understand this is the newer edition. And it also has the option for dual boot, what we're going to talk about later on in this video. The display is a 3.5 inch IPS display, it has 60 FPS with a resolution of 640 by 480. We also have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth possibilities or connectivity, it's pretty cool. And yeah, the Bluetooth, we can connect them with different things like I already shown with the previous video, like headsets and gamepads, you name it. Nevertheless, this thing has a support of quite different emulators, so let's take a close look at the handheld itself. So when you're looking at the casing itself, it's similar with the first version I've reviewed. So far I understand they didn't do many changes or not at all. But let's take a quick overview for the people who are not familiar with the Retroid Pocket 2. Alright, so let's take a close look at the Retroid Pocket 2. At the left side we're having more like the Nintendo Switch joystick. The D-pad itself is very clicky, I'm not the biggest fan of it. We're going to play some games with it to see how it plays. At the right side we're having another joystick, the slider joystick like the PSP. I find it very interesting if you're going to get a more like an analog stick like the left one it will poke in your finger so they did some research okay the right side we're going to find the a b x and y this is just more like the clickish button like the previous model at the front we're having two speakers and here at the left we're having home select and start at the bottom we can find the tf card slot and of course the headphone jack out at the top we're having four shoulder buttons that is something we're not going to get with every single handheld what I find quite interesting is that even if they are different looking, you can see that the angle and how high they are, they're completely different, but also the click. This thing clicks very nice, 
but this thing you can also see it clicks a little bit differently and also having different travel quite interesting to see okay we're having here the volume control on and off and hearing the connection for the HDMI out and of course the port for charging and data transfer at the back we're going to find some more information about it I really like how it looks but of course how it looks the shell is more like personal taste I really like it it's very comfortable in the hand and I think that is one of the best and comfortable handhelds I've played in this year okay so let's power it on I just wanted to give you a quick look in the boot up sequence as already mentioned, this thing has an option to, for a dual boot, so this means we can boot it up in the normal Android version, but also the one with more like the Pandora's box menu. That makes, by the way, the Retroid Pocket 2 the only one that has more like a dual boot system so far, I know. I do know that there were some older versions, like really older versions that more like a dual or unswappable where you can swap out the SD cards, but never like a dual boot inside that they can swap between. I think it's pretty cool and pretty unique. But let's take a close look at the menu of just the Android. So what I really like about it, when you're booting it up, you're going to get some tips. And the reason why, because we have some functionalities that are not typical to your Android device. And the reason why, we don't have a touch screen. I think that's the biggest bummer of this handheld. It's just really a handheld. But as you can see, it's more like how you change the volume, but also how you need to use the cursor. For example, when you're pressing the whole button, everything goes in mouse mode and you can navigate with the mouse and the left joystick. Quite interesting, and you really need to get used to this, but I do like this. Okay, as you can see over here, we have the menu like a normal phone. All the options and all the tools are over here. What I do like about it, it is preloaded with some emulators like the free Classic Boy. Keep in mind that this thing is, I really like the Classic Boy. It's really a little bit outdated, but you can play some games with it. Flycast for Dreamcast. So it's just like a phone and you have some, a lot of different apps you can use. Nevertheless, the display itself looks crisp and clear. I really like it. But let's take a close look at the dual boot because this is pretty interesting. Okay, so the first time when you boot up in the second menu, you can see we're going to get this welcome screen where we're going to get an explanation how the system works. And yeah, a language, time zone, you name it. I can think it's quite interesting the way how far basically they go with this. Nevertheless, Retro Pocket 2, hmm, you did a very nice job with this. Okay, so the people who are familiar with Pandora's box, like the Pandora game 3D, they know what you're going to get with this. But basically, here we're going to get the top categorized, like the all category, recent and search. I'm very pleased to see that they basically have put everything in the same position. With category system, you can see you can scroll through the list itself of the games. And we're having support from 8-bit, 16-bit, uh, PC Engine, MAME, you name it, PSP, Arcade. Nevertheless, there was a lot of things that they support. All right, so let's a quick look through the settings list. That I do like about the Retro Pocket handheld, you can do a lot of stuff like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Everything is very easy to reach and to change out. We're also having the HDMI settings. And what you can see over here, that it works very easy to navigate through the menu with the analog stick. Let's go back. I need to press the home button. Key settings. The key settings uh, is a little bit of a bummer in my opinion. We have the game keyboard layout. As you can see, we can even change it out. We can add an extra controller if you want to. The gamepad settings. Here we have, if you want to add a new controller to it for, let's say, player two, that is all possible. So there are quite some options out there. Changing out the controls itself is also a little bit of a bummer, a little bit messy with these menus. The same like Pandora's box. But overall, it's pretty cool. We have a lot of options. Even optimization is over here. We're having here the show FPS. I think it's pretty interesting that we find a lot of new, say, options with the Retroid Pocket. A feature I had never seen before with a Pandora box or with a Retroid Pocket is this. The video aspect ratio can be changed and even the video rotation. So, hmm, it seems to be but this new Retro Pocket 2, they did some minor improvements. Improvements that I was waiting for. So yeah, this is hopeful. What I do like about this, the sound is just amazing with this Retro Pocket 2. Okay, let's try the D-pad. No. Man, I love it already. Okay. 
But the older and let's say the cheaper versions of the Chinese handhelds, I always notice a lot of screen tearing. And so far so good. Good sound. I really love this display. Okay, so let's play a little bit. Let's get some fast sonic action and let's see how this looks. No sound delay. And I do like the analog stick and the D-pad. And I don't see any screen tearing whatsoever. So that is really promising. And the same goes with this and the options all we're having here. Let's put an original. Let's see how this looks. I'm very curious. <laughs> no, that was not a really good idea. Let's put it in full. All right. And we're having stretch. Oh. It's up to you what to decide, but I think the better thing is more like to put this in. No, 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 don't, 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 don't do that. Original. <laughs> Let's see how it sounds. Oh yeah, this sounds exactly like the original game. Cheap ass computer. Oh man, the D-pad is just a lot. I'm not gonna say it's one of my favorite, but just go down. Oh crap! I just jumped into it. No. Damn it! I wanted to do that. But it sounds perfect and it plays perfect. Same story with the aspect ratio. Oh yeah. I can say this is one of my favorite PC Engine games at the moment. Ooh. But as you can see, all the 8 bits, or better said, all the 2 dimensional stuff, the old stuff will run just fine. Okay, let's put this one in. Okay, let's try the D-pad because my, with analog, one of the things that doesn't help at all. I can do, I can do it. I can do all the moves with the D-pad. We need to get used to it, but. But in my opinion, I think the game plays just fine. Okay, wait. Okay, I just take that back. The last part was pretty choppy. Nevertheless, you get the point. Next! No, but it is not playable. You can see how choppy and how slow it runs. It's just it's unplayable, but it is most of the problem with the PSP in general, with a lot of these devices. It seems to be where we quick load per save and we can change out the Xbox ratio. No. Okay, so the HDMI function is something you don't see very often on handhelds from China, especially with the price range around, let's say, $80 that work perfectly. We did see in the past that we had a lot of problems with HDMI functionalities that didn't work, but there were connections on the handheld. But with the Bluetooth Pocket 2, it works like a charm, as you can see over here. I plug it in, and it instantly gives the signal to the television. But even with the TV out function, it works like a charm. And I think it's pretty cool, because what you can do, you can hook up two controllers, and then you can basically use this thing like a game system. So it's pretty cool idea, and a lot of functionalities with the Retro Poker 2. 
All right, so the Retroid Pocket 2, I think it's a very nice handheld when it comes to the functionalities and what you're going to pay for it. The shell itself is fully made of plastic, but it feels quite durable, to be honest, and it feels also quite heavy for a plastic, fantastic handheld. But the thing is that we can do so much cool things like streaming, you can play the Retroid Pocket menu, it's just awesome. You have so many new things you can just change out, aspect ratio, things that I was asking for a couple of years, they just change it out and finally add it to the system. Okay, I realized that they did send me the Android 6 version, yep, and it was very strange and I was a little bit of pissed about it. Because I did order it way later than the pre first model and yeah, they sent me the Android 6. But they improved a lot of different things with the menu. Nevertheless, let me know in the comments what do you think of this, what kind of version do you own at the moment. I want to thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell, become one of the Wicked family. And I will see you in the next video.